Now tell us about Lazarus and, and what is your business model? Who, who is your customer? Who pays you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Lazarus 3D is a company I founded two years ago, and we're centered around a new technological innovation that lets us build really soft materials that act very similar to real tissues. You can actually rehearse operations on them. And initially, um, after, after developing this technology, I thought most of our clients would probably be hospitals. What we found, though, is that uh, the, the best way to get this into the market is through medical device uh, companies. The reason is that medical device companies have a very strong need. They need to get people to adopt their technology, to learn how to use it, and to, uh, uh, to figure out why it's effective and more effective than other options on the market. And so they see an instant uh, bottom line incentive uh, for them to adopt this technology. So about 70% of our business is making models for medical device companies to show off their technology and improve sales and, uh, and, and, and adoption. About the remaining 30% is training in hospitals. We also make patient-specific models, which can be used, um, as Dr. Kowarik and Dr. Nazir were saying, uh, to help with surgical planning and rehearsal of upcoming surgeries. All of that has been done pro bono to date. Um, and one of the things I would love to see from a corporate uh, perspective is a way to get reimbursed for that so that we can begin to use it more widely. So let me, uh, that's a, an interesting question that I was going to raise later, but let me, let me bring the physicians in now. And, and everything today is about saving money and, and driving down health care costs. Does 3D printing add to the cost of the procedure? Does it um, uh, reduce the cost? How, what kind of cost argument do you make for 3D printing? You know, when you talk about cost, it depends on how much you want to zoom in or zoom out, right? If you want to add to the cost just the operating room and add to it a 3D printed organ, the cost is going to be more. But if you think that the 3D application will prevent a complication and look at the overall encounter cost, that would be a money saving. Mm -hmm. So uh, overall, we think that uh, we focus on outcomes, we focus on delivering the best we can to the patient, and we think collectively all this in the future will be a cost saving. But nothing is cheap as we start. Right. And is it a limitation right now that it's more expensive? I mean, are you doing these mostly in uh, experimental cases? When, when exactly are you using it and when is it not appropriate to use 3D printing? Because you could, you, could you could do a preoperative model on everything. Yes, we can, and actually, um, you know, Dr. Zen, who's, who's the head of hepatology at the Cleveland Clinic, you know, uh, can tell you about his experience, how much it helped them in the liver transplant. And, you know, you can talk so, so give mean, us that story. Yeah, I mean, I, I will start by saying any technology will add to cost. So there is no doubt that it will add to cost. And in the healthcare environment in which hospitals are getting paid a fixed fee for the for the operation, anything added to the cost, it means it's going to come out of their down the bottom line. But uh, uh, and, but it, on the flip side, is avoiding complication will save the hospital a lot of uh, money as well. So what is the, the magic? Uh, 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 what's the magic operation? What is the magic number in which we feel that the cost of 3D printing will uh, would be you know balanced by saving complication? I'm not sure, but certainly it has to do with the complexity of the procedures. So to liver transplant, we we have uh, used 3D printing in probably about uh, uh, 25, 30 cases of liver transplants, uh, uh, both live donor cadaveric transplantation, and. Uh, in, in one paper that we published on it, we published a series of cases in which we, we believe we avoided uh, some potential complication. One of which, uh, so when we printed the liver of the uh, patient or the donor, we printed it along the resection, in, intended resection plane in the operation. In one particular case, we, we realized our intended uh, resection plane would be too close to the middle hepatic uh, vein in which a, if you cut through it, probably the patient will end up with a major complication. In the second case, we, the patient had anatomical variation in which the, bar, the insertion of the cystic duct into the bar duct was too low, meaning we could not do the appropriate intraoperative cholangiogram, which is necessary in, uh, in uh, cases of liver transplant, so we used the model. Uh, we have used it in the third case, and I'll be brief, is actually the first case of what we call it auto-transplant at the clinic was done because of 3D printing in liver transplant. So what this meant is a complex case 
of a large liver tumor in which was the patient was felt to, to have a tumor that is unresectable, was turned down by a couple major institutions around the country for operation came here. The only way could, uh, our surgeon figured could be done is by removing the entire liver to the back table, doing the operation on the back table, and then you re-implant or you transplant the healthy part. The problem is, uh, you know, that 3D printing guided this whole process. So we, we did our first uh, um, resection on the back table, auto-transplant or 3D printing. These are unusual, rare cases, very complex. They don't come every day. But in those cases, I have no doubt that added technology to improve knowledge prior to the operation will, will have a value. So, if, if I can interject very quickly, uh, dollars and cents is something you think about a lot when you're running a business, right? right? And uh, I think that using this technology has the potential to save the entire system an immense amount of money. Right. So we did 13 of these patient-specific uh, uh, operations today where we've made copies of the patient organs. In one of those, uh, the doctor and the patient uh, and myself are all fairly convinced that if we had not done a 3D printed model, that patient would have lost his kidney, gone into acute uh, renal failure, and required uh, uh, dialysis, uh, required dialysis to prevent renal failure. So that would have cost the medical system about half of a million dollars. That would have shortened that patient's lifespan to three to five years. Now, a one 3D printed model that we were using in these, we would charge a thousand if we were if we were to go forward. So that means that by spending thirteen thousand dollars to make these models, we uh, likely saved half a million dollars in follow-up complications. Now that's a small sample size. We need to build better data sets so we can determine whether or not this trend follows through. But if that type of occurrence, if the reduction of these rare, expensive complications occurs at any appreciable rate, you stand to save the system an immense amount of money and improve life, uh, quality of life, and longevity of your patients. But, but can I quickly come and just say, I think it's going to be very hard to ever do a study in order to demonstrate that the 3D printed model prevented complication at a statistically significant rate than not having it. So at some point, it's no different than all imaging modality, at some point, people will have to decide is this useful or not. Is it? Uh, we did one controlled study, you know, randomized controlled surgeons, uh, uh, you know, uh, got uh, to operate with or without model. And what, what we found is that the surgeons felt a lot more comfortable in the operating room when they did it, but we couldn't show that there was difference in, in complication rate. It will require a very large study to show something like that. It will require yes. about two hundred. Yeah, two quick points about that. One is that, you know, yes, uh, you may not be able to quantitate a, a prevention of a complication easily, but you can quantitate maybe easier a doable or non-doable transplant. So by getting more patients, expanding the indications of who can receive a transplant, you're saving them a bit you know, a, a, a more medical problem going through the medical management rather than surgery. The second point is that we're focusing cost only on the patient and patient related. How about the caregivers? The surgeons, the training that comes with that, the preparation that comes with that, that's also a, an indirect cost that can be uh, big. So, so let me, let me uh, 